I want you to think about some moments that you've had with a narcissist where you've realized, man, this person seems to have some issues with anger that defy the norms. Has that ever happened to you? That can be at a work setting or extended family or friendships or inside your own home. But uh, narcissists have a very difficult time managing anger cleanly because anger to them is a power emotion and it becomes an opportunity for them to get you in line. And of course, what they do is they make matters really sloppy and messy. And so I, I want to see if we can have an understanding of what's going on inside of that angry narcissist to the point where they can go to places of rage and harshness that can scare you. But the more you have an understanding of what you're up against, then the less you're going to get pulled into their dominance and control. Um, let, let, let's start with the assumption that healthy individuals have a certain foundational belief system that they draw upon. Uh, in other words, they have a sense of purpose that they live with. Part of the purpose that I hope that you've decided to live according to has to do with setting yourself up as being somebody who's good and kind and helpful. Uh, whether it's in your professional expertise, you want to make sure that that's something that you do for the betterment of other individuals. It's not just all about you. You know that you have an interconnectedness with other people. And so as you engage with others in such a way that's mutually beneficial, then life is going to go much more smoothly. Now, I want you to think, how many narcissists do you know who draw upon that kind of inner sense of purpose and that sense of direct uh, direction? And of course, the answer is no, they, they don't think like that. They don't think outside themselves. Their whole purpose in life is to preserve themselves. Now, basically, uh, a narcissist is pretty much a lost soul. Uh, they are into uh, ingredients like power and dominance and privilege and entitlement, uh, forcefulness. It's like, well, I don't really care what purpose you have in your life. In fact, some of them may mock it. Uh, all I know is, is I need to be in charge and I need to get people and events and circumstances to line up to what I say is right. And so uh, basically that means that life to them is a competition. That person has to win, which means that someone else like you, or you're going to have to lose. And basically, this sets them uh, them up to feel a lot of anger. Uh, because when you don't get their memo, or you don't go according to their memo and say, okay, we'll do everything according to your agenda, then they can be simmering over there wondering, well, why aren't you living life according to what I say is right? Now, there are certain primary ingredients that the narcissist already has on the inside of their personalities that makes them highly vulnerable to inappropriate anger. For example, narcissists are easily critical. Uh, basically, they operate with the assumption, my way is the best, Mm, that's, that's enough. And so they, as they watch you and observe you, it's extremely easy for them to find fault in what you think or say or do or how you approach things. You know, there's just a lot of variety out there that they uh, don't want to encounter, or don't want to engage with. And so when you show yourself to be a bit other, uh, then here comes that critical thinking. And then that also sets them up to have a, a just kind of a simmering annoyance or an impatient with people and events in general. Uh, it's like, well, all sorts of little bitty small matters can get under their skin and can uh, agitate them. And of course, you know about that. And then in addition to all of that, then uh, because of their uh, critical mindset and because of that simmering impatient, they offer plenty of unsolicited advice and try to tell you how to run things in the way that they uh, suppose that things are supposed to be done. And then basically, the narcissist will have their pet trigger points uh, that they uh, watch for. It may be how you spend money. It may be how you manage time. It may be how you uh, approach projects that you're working on together. It might be have something to do with your belief system or your political persuasions, those kind of things. And because they have those trigger points, anytime that those things come along, then it starts making them go into that control kind of and power kind of mentality. And so then here comes the anger. Now, I want you to uh, to think about some of the primary forms of anger 
that that narcissist in your world may use. And sometimes it can get really ugly to the point of, of uh, what we would call narcissistic rage. Uh, for example, they can go into a loud and shouting and overwhelming style of communication where nobody else is going to get another word in. And uh, when that happens, then it's insults. It's condescension. What's wrong with you? Cornering questions, those kind of things. And then they can make threats. I'll tell you what, if you want to keep doing A, B, and C, uh, you're going to see exactly what kind of a miserable decision that's going to be. And I'm going to make sure, you know, they go into all of that kind of discussion with you and they refuse to work with you. They refuse to hear your point of view because once they get into the anger, then it's all about themselves. And, and basically they create chaos uh, in a relationship rather than thinking, okay, wait a minute, you have a, a position, you have a way of thinking and feeling that's not the way I do. I have mine. Why don't we put our heads together and talk about it? That would actually uh, involve clean and uh, healthy assertive anger, which is something they don't know how to do. Instead, they'll curse at you. Instead, they'll call you names. Instead, they'll insult you. They'll insult your ideas. They'll insult your plans. They'll insult your friends. They'll insult your family. They'll insult how you feel. They'll insult your preferences. Does any of that sound very familiar? And uh, when you look at uh, what's going on inside that anger, I'm, I'm hoping you're going to recognize there's, there's certain elements there that you can't afford to match pitch on. Now, the natural tendency that you might have when they go into their anger place is to go into your anger place. And you can be just as ugly or argumentative as they are. Uh, sometimes you may give them all sorts of advice that they're not asking for, and you plead your case, and you explain that if you would quit doing A and do B instead, then everything would be okay. Of course, once a, a, a narcissist's anger is triggered, uh, it's going to take quite a while for them to get out of it because they're never going to say, hey, you're making a good point. That, that's just not in their vocabulary. And sometimes you respond with uh, your own suppression of emotion, or you'll act out behind the scenes where they don't see it and notice it. So I'm hoping that you can get an idea that even if you are the kind of person that likes to operate with a sense of purpose, helpfulness, those kind of things, you're not dealing with somebody who has that same kind of mindset. So um, as we look at uh, how you're going to respond to that narcissist, I, I want to see if I can get you to, to kind of have a visual in mind about what's really going on inside that person. And as you get this visual in mind, perhaps it can help you learn to respond in a much more detached kind of way so that you're not suckered into uh, their mannerism. And here's the visual. That angry narcissist, if you can picture them with their hands over their faces, just crying, sobbing, weeping, that's what's really happening. There's a cry that's a part of that, that narcissist's anger. The narcissist is basically crying, even though they're not using these words, why is my world so difficult? Why can't you affirm me? And there's just this, I don't know what to do with this. It, it hurts me so much to be me in the presence of all you people out there, and I just can't handle the, the differentness that comes there. And so if you can have that visual where that narcissist is really crying behind the scenes, you'll see that what you're dealing with is a hurt little boy or a hurt little girl who has a severely damaged ego. Now, those people can have such a low level of self-awareness that they'll take the words that I'm saying right now and just roll their eyes and say, oh, that is so not true. And my response is, oh, it is so true. The narcissist who rages and who has this chronic anger is more or less saying, I don't know what to do with life. When life gives me twists and turns and when things don't unfold according to my agenda, I feel immobilized. And so what I have to do is I have to force and coerce people to live according to what my short-term cravings are so that maybe I can get through this moment. 
and they have no sense of purpose that they draw upon. Uh, their purpose is to make you coordinate with them. Whereas the healthy individual says, wait a minute, if there are some things, some of those triggers that can make me feel angry, I have a game plan. I know who I am and I don't have to have everything lined up according to my preferences in order for me to remain steady, in order for me to remain fair-minded. That's how I'm hoping you can be, but I'm hoping you can recognize that when you're dealing with an angry narcissist who can go straight into that place of rage, you're dealing with somebody whose pain is so strong and so overwhelming and has so overtaken their personalities that there's not a lot of reasoning that you're going to be able to have with them. So that being the case, at the very least, I want you to have a good understanding and insight into what you're dealing with. And then as you respond, I'm hoping you can recognize, I'm not going to get into your childish and your very immature approach towards life. I do have a sense of purpose and I do have a sense of meaning and it doesn't include all of this haranguing and harshness and meanness and insults. That's your problem that you haven't come to terms with. I have come to terms with who I am and it's quite different. Can you think like that? Now, I'm hoping that you gain from these videos. I'm hoping that you see that uh, I'm, I'm wanting you to know and understand what's going on inside the narcissist first so that you can uh, learn how to uh, separate yourself off from their garbage, but more importantly, so that you can have a sense that says, I need to go into a different path. And so that's what these videos are about. I would invite you to go beneath the video and hit the subscribe button so that we can let you know when more videos come along. Beneath the video, I also have some links to some of my books and some online workshops that you might be interested in. I'm privileged to have uh, for you to invite me along uh, on your journey as you're trying to figure all this out. And please know that I take my role in this very seriously. And knowing that, I will see you next time.